Alright guys, Touch Gravy back again today. Hope you enjoyed your day so far and today we're going to talk about Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War as we tend to on this channel. Yesterday, Raid was officially confirmed with the pushback of Season 1 to December the 16th is the current plan from Track and the Activision guys, but Raid is confirmed when that does drop. This is a pretty big deal of course for the competitive scene. We talked about this a few days ago. The maps that have been in the past, DLC maps in competitive rotations. Raid is well the first time we're going to get this I imagine in the competitive rotation for a number of years. And considering all the stories storylines and the great rivalries and the great team dynamics that we have going into next season there's certainly a question of is this Call of Duty 2021 season going to be the best Call of Duty season that we have ever had with the infrastructure that is now in place in truth dear your thoughts in the comment section below like if you guys enjoy the video subscribe if you are new as always I'd greatly appreciate it, it really helps out the channel thank you very much for doing that this comes out then from Call of Duty yesterday season one is coming an unprecedented drop of free content arrives in Black Ops Cold War and Warzone on the 16th of December initially it was meant to be the 10th they've pushed it back and uh, well apparently it's still an unprecedented drop of free content so yeah Trek says it's now dropping on the 16th I do imagine that the whole working from home situation has made things more challenging for them to get out in time but they do confirm Raid confirms this of course a Black Ops 2 map a legendary map you guys were commenting in the video about uh, what you guys thought were the best maps in my opinion as well I actually kind of think the standoff I had more fun on standoff in general I think it was a slightly better map maybe but uh, yeah it's tough to say Raid and standoff both in my opinion both phenomenal maps I hope standoff gets back as well because that was um, well that's probably my all-time favourite. But yeah, Raid's certainly right up there. One of the most fun maps of all I've ever played on in public matches, but also from the competitive side. Hard point of it as it was Capture the Flag back in the day, Search and Destroy. It doesn't get too much better than Raid's. And so yeah, maps that are as well perfect as this and are well-rounded as this and are as well-made as this, why do we not have them like in a lot of titles, right? We did see it come back in Black Ops 3. It's a map called Empire in one of the DLCs, but obviously didn't play the same with jetpacks and everything. So there's certainly a question to say like every single trial game that drops, we should be be playing on raid for the competitive side you could argue right i mean especially maybe some point down the line if you want to have like a consistent competitive title which plays somewhat like black ops 2 but maybe it does um it does still move with the times and that like every year maybe you get a new engine you get new weapons but maybe you can still be playing on the same maps or something like that raid seems like um a staple that should be in every call of duty but it's cool to see it coming back at the very least and it's the first time we've seen something like this for a long time and as tony flame says cold war guns and attachments in war zone very interesting to see exactly how that crossover will work still using the um, the Warzone engine the Modern Warfare engine but actually introducing the Cold War guns and attachments into Warzone the best of both worlds come together in season one and I think later today we're going to talk about content but uh, yeah pretty interesting discussion from Scump and he was saying it in this clip we're going to look at in the video later today but he was talking about how okay in Warzone it's a bit difficult to actually play that from a content side because if Warzone's still going to be running on the Modern Warfare engine and they're playing competitive on the Black Ops Cold War engine then like you know why am I going to want to mess up my muscle memory and that sense so certainly an interesting one but as he does say in this as well expect new weapons score streaks maps i.e raid game modes blueprints operators and more all that good stuff this of course is raid from black ops 2 this is the ring side this is the lambo this is where the b flag is top red bottom red pillars i mean zig you've got open stairs you've got the white van driveway all this good stuff um yeah one of my favorite maps of all time this is the overview of the map as well if you guys aren't too familiar with it maybe you guys didn't play black ops 2 so this is how it works the first hard point is over here with the ring side second hard point is here in kit Kitchen. Third hard point goes all the way back to back garage. Then hill four is over in basketball court down here. And then the fifth one is here in mid. And then it rotates back to the right hand side. In terms of search and destroy the bomb site locations, this was B bomb over here by the pillars by the ring side. This was, uh, well, the other bomb site was over by the pool. A bomb uh, near Tiki Hut. And uh, this is called money. And uh, well, you know all the good stuff. Top laundry as well over here. Top pool building or whatever people call that exactly over here. Definitely these uh, call outs are bringing me back a few years. But uh, I think I saw uh, Optic Chicago. They were playing like a mobile game or something and they were playing on raid and the bomb site locations in that they actually moved them around a little bit the uh, the b-bomb especially i think was over more by this uh, truck so i wonder if they'll try and tweak around the bomb site locations thinking maybe it could be slightly better to move them around somewhat but yeah this is how we was playing in black ops so i'll probably have to do a video on the channel soon like top five raid moments of all time or something like that from black ops 2 to bring that back into the public eye because certainly a map that deserves a lot of recognition and cool to see it coming back the question mark for me is is standoff ever going to return this is a phenomenal map 
map, of course, you got top brown. You got to the first hard point was over here. Then you had the second one on top green. Then it went to granny's. Then the fourth hard point over in the bottom of this building. Forget what people call this. Maybe it was just yellow because the walls were yellow or something like that. You got the tank. Just so, uh, yeah, memories coming, flooding back at this point for the Black Ops 2 days. But yeah, certainly two of the best maps in Call of Duty history, in my opinion. Honestly, Treg did a phenomenal job with the maps back in the day. And it'd be great to see these maps come back into competitive rotations once again on a consistent basis, right? Like every single year, we have the question, we have the concern about what the maps are looking like, right? And um, well, as Adam Apicella says, we'll just look at it in quite a second here. But I just wanted to look at this first. These are the maps that we have in this game. Armada, Strike, Cartel, Checkmate, Crossroads, Garrison, Miami, Moscow, and Satellite. Only a couple of these. Like, Moscow seems decent to me. Crossroads I do actually particularly like. The rest of the maps are a little bit questionable for a number of reasons. And um, yeah, there's only a certain a number of ways that you can reconfigure a new Call of Duty map that doesn't like an, it's not an exact copy of a previous map that has been made in the past. Therefore, to me, there's so many great maps that have been made throughout Call of Duty history, it makes sense to bring them back on a regular basis. I understand that um, yeah, people want new content, and I certainly get that and wouldn't want to play the same maps forever. I would love to have a situation where we get new maps every few months or something, but certainly the staple maps, we always get the opportunity to play, kind of like how it is in Counter-Strike. So I'd certainly love to see that maybe a few years down the line for the competitive side, Activision can implement something where every single, well, great map in Call of Duty history, the likes of Raid, the likes of Standoff, the likes of maybe Slums, Meltdown for Search and Destroy, people have been talking about also coming back from Black Ops 2. There's certainly some Black Ops 3 maps which might be able to be adapted. Something like Fringe, for example, you might be able to bring back into a boot on the ground title and things like that that maybe should be in every single game and then you add some more on top of that. I think that would um, no, make for a great experience, I think, from the competitive side and I'm sure the pros would be very happy with it without really having to worry about, okay, do these maps play competitively? Are the spawns any good? Because we just know the spawns are good on those maps and that's kind of what Adam Apicella goes into here. It's a great thing to see COD bring back their best maps. Publishers, even if games have iterations or sequels, please continue to reuse great maps. Iterate on a core set of competition tournament features. Carry over and build an observer mode. No need to reinvent the wheel. Have them apply this logic to Express, for example. Slum standoff firing range for Black Ops 1. Could have the most diverse and exciting map pool ever. That's the thing right there. Given all the maps which shipped with this game, there's quite a few decent ones as I was saying. That There's a few of these which are certainly playable. If you also add Raid and Standoff and maybe Fringe or something and Express for a search and destroy map, maybe Meltdown, you chuck Yemen in there as a hard point map or something like that, then all of a sudden you have a very, very diverse map pool, which, uh, well, might be great to watch and play from a competitive perspective. The vetoes might be a lot more in-depth than they usually are, for example. And so, yeah, as Adam says, pretty clear, every great map for every game should be reused for sequels. And the other part of this really is the people really seem to be loving Call of Duty Black Ops Card War. So with the maps potentially coming into effect and looking pretty good, the core base game, in my opinion, is really fun. I've had a lot of fun playing it. The pros seem to like it on the whole. There's certainly some issues with competitive play, but on the whole, pros seem a lot happier with this game than they were um, no, back in Modern Warfare, for example, and Treyarch seem to be a lot more responsive to, well, the needs of the competitive community than the developers were of last year's Call of Duty game. So everything is shaping up pretty nicely, and in addition to that, we have some great teams and great franchises back in this league. So, of course, we've got the FaZe Clan team, Atlanta FaZe, Dallas Empire, Mutineers, London Royal Ravens, Gorillas. Then we've got the Los Angeles Thieves. So this was really the, the big story of the offseason, quite honestly. The fact that Optic Gaming Los Angeles reacquired in terms of the branding by Hector Rodriguez, rebrand Chicago Huntsman to Optic Chicago, Los Angeles Thieves then come in as 100 Thieves, purchasing out that spot from Hector, who bought it off the Immortals group, becoming the Los Angeles Thieves. So going into next season, the rivalries and the storylines are at an all-time high. We've got some great teams here, back to a 4 versus 4 boots on the ground environment, with some old traditional Call of Duty maps coming into effect with a great base core game. I mean, um, yeah, this year is definitely shaping up to be a very good one, in my opinion. So the final piece of the puzzle to put together is actually having a decent format, right? And that's certainly what I hope that we do get this season. If it's somewhat similar to last season, I think we can be relatively happy, but, uh, you know, we'll have to see how the whole online stuff plays out. But that, in my opinion, has always been the downfall of Treyarch games, like a game like Black Ops 3, for example. Such a good game. I absolutely loved it from competitive play, in my opinion, at the very least. But we had very few tournaments that entire year. I think there was only, like, six proper LAN events the entire season. There was, like, an online season, Stage 1, Stage 2, Relegation, this type of stuff, which is pretty decent to watch. But in terms of, like, major LAN events, we barely had any, right? And that was, of course, in a pre-COVID age. Nowadays, we've got this whole situation going on. We don't really know when we're going to be going back to LAN, but hopefully, at least, if we do still get a decent tournament format with a lot of tournaments, a lot of the time with, um, you know, players and teams able to actually win an event like we've had in the past, and we don't go back to, like, an entirely league system because we really don't know what the, um, what everything is going to look like from that perspective, then I think this can be the best ever year for Call of Duty Esports, but the format certainly does dictate quite a lot here, so we'll have to stay tuned for exactly what's going to be happening there. Just to finish off the video this from Cronut CDL Intel some notable teams for this weekend's Challengers Cup so this weekend tonight actually the 5th 
of December into tomorrow, the 6th of December, there's going to be a Challengers Cup number one. So these guys are definitely running a few weeks ahead of the Pro League schedule with the idea that potentially some of these guys could get picked up onto competitive teams. So as we looked at yesterday, Aix, Karma, Saints and Classic, you've got this team of Morks as well, Parasite's team, a number of big names of course in this one that I'm just scrolling through. There's some of course in the European region, but yeah, these are the notable teams. Zed, Dens, Sensor and Gunjo is another one I believe Sensor was also talking on the Stay Attached podcast that um, Gunjo was actually meant to be on a CDL team, but it fell through for whatever reason. That may have been Paris, as we did talk about a few days ago. And just to finish off the video with this legendary moment back from Raid back in the day, if you guys haven't seen this video, it's a pretty famous one on YouTube, but uh, yeah, I'm sure you guys will enjoy it for those who have not. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. It really helps out the YouTube algorithm know you enjoyed this content. Other people like you may enjoy this content as well, and I'll grow the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you for watching as always. Take care, and I will see you next time. Look, he killed me with a stun. A stun, he can't use a stun. Yeah, guys, look. Yeah, yeah, look, guys, look, look. Hey, disconnected. Yeah, guys. Thanks for watching, guys.